Grief is never a linear path, and even when two people deal with the same loss, the mourning process can be very different. While some people run, others search for a safe place to land, and some people may even blame themselves for it. This story is about Elizabeth, a journalist who is trying to help someone she doesn't even know to find a second chance with love, who also miraculously discovers a chance to find love again. In the opening scene of time for him to come home for Christmas, there is a flashback showing Elizabeth, a graduate student focusing on journalism, at a Christmas party. Her mother introduces her to an executive at the party, telling him how proud she is of her daughter and how she wishes she could work for her firm. A mother seeking the best for her child. Elizabeth is rescued from the party by Josh, her best friend, who also majors in journalism. He is there to take her to his family party, but she is reluctant to go, because she feels her mother will be bothered about her whereabouts. Josh promises to give her her favorite cookies. What better way to bribe your way, especially in this case, when there is a bigger connection between them? We'll get to find out more about their connection soon. Josh's family is so pleased to see her, especially his mother. However, Josh surprises Elizabeth by calling over their other best friend Andy, who has not been in the city for a while. She is happy and surprised to see him at the party. Elizabeth, Josh, and Andrew decide to have their friends talk as usual. Josh and Elizabeth reveal to Andrew their offer to work for the New York Times, and he is very excited for them. Just then, he sees a shooting star and asks them to make a wish, as is their tradition every Christmas, and of course, they do. The way Josh looks at Elizabeth shows he has feelings for her, and wishes they were more than just friends. They take a selfie and wish themselves Merry Christmas. Three years later, Elizabeth now works for her mother's company as an executive assistant. Her mother is overjoyed to have her work for her firm, and will not let her alone. Their Christmas party is coming up, and they are getting prepared. A time to be merry with family and friends as usual. But it seems Elizabeth is yet to have a love interest, and her mother implores her to meet new people outside the working relationship, explore, go on dates, and get a love life. If only it were that easy. Elizabeth gets a call from an unknown number, but she lets it go to voicemail, because her mother is still advising her to get a man. The caller leaves a message, which she listens to after her mother leaves for her office. It is a man calling for someone named Maddie. He wants to meet on Christmas Eve at 9, and wants a second chance with Maddie. The caller hopes he will get a positive response from Madeline. Well mister, this clearly isn't Maddie. It is Elizabeth. He does not have an idea that he called the wrong number, and that his message did not get to the intended person. Elizabeth tries to call back, but the number belongs to a hotel and it could have been any customer, so they are unable to help unless she knows his name, which she doesn't. Meanwhile, the man, whom we will later get to know as Carter, is in a hotel room beside a phone and his suitcase. He picks up a photograph of himself and a lady, looking at it longingly. It seems he is the caller. He also picks up a Christmas snow globe and looks at it fondly. The message really gets to Elizabeth, and she feels the need to help him. Coupled with the fact that she sees the Christmas necklace Andrew gave her at the Christmas party, she sees his memorial marked on the calendar, and understands how it feels to lose someone you love. Still worried, she informs her mother about the call. Since she can't get across to the caller, her mother believes there's nothing much she can do to help the man. But Elizabeth won't let it go without attempting to help. She decides to give it a try. She visits the hotel and begs the receptionist to try and find the caller. But he turns her down because she doesn't know his name, and believes there's nothing he can do to help her. He leaves her to attend to another customer. As fate would have it, the person turns out to be Josh, who is back in town, and she is surprised to see him back after a long time. However, the awkwardness in the air is glaring. One would expect that two friends who used to be close would envelop each other in a warm embrace, but it appears things have gone sour. She can't seem to stand the same Josh who had a secret crush on her. She leaves the receptionist with the message, and asks him to reconsider her request. In order to avoid talking to Josh, she leaves. But the receptionist trashes the message after she leaves. Josh feels bad about it, so he picks up the message and reads through it. After booking a room in the hotel, he rushes after her to tell her what the receptionist did, and also get a chance to talk to her. She appreciates him, but feels like there's nothing more she can do to help the man. When he tries encouraging her to try her best in locating the guy, because he knows she doesn't give up easily, she takes a jab at him that people change, and he'd know that if he stuck around. So, the problem appears to be the fact that Josh left. What could have been the reason for his leaving that would leave her hurt? We'll find out. Josh visits his home, and his mother is so thrilled to have him home for Christmas after a long time. He lets her know that he will be staying in a hotel, because he does not want to inconvenience them. He is so happy to be back home, and he also remembers his friend, Andrew, missing him. His mother wishes he would get along with Elizabeth, and hopes things work out between them. Meanwhile, Elizabeth wants to help the man. She listens to the voicemail repeatedly, and hears him talk about a candy store. She gets into her investigative mood and checks for the candy store online. She plans to go there, to see if she can get anything that will help her find him. Then, her alarm reminds her of Andrew's memorial. A painful event. She goes to his memorial and she remembers how close they were, and how he wanted to come back home for good. He had a plan for his future, but could not achieve it, and she blames herself for it. 
She lights a candle for him and hangs the Christmas light necklace on his picture. Josh gets to play with his sister's son, while his mother and sister decorate the Christmas tree. His sister is curious to know about Michigan, and if he likes the place. But he claims he likes it, and even shows her the house he just acquired. However, his mother wants him to stay with them. And she is not happy with the house he got in Michigan. She feels his place is with them, and not somewhere far away. At the same time, his sister believes he is hiding something, and knows that he is trying to stay away from Elizabeth because he loves her. She hopes he will get to tell her how he feels about her. But he doesn't think that will be possible, especially after their encounter at the hotel. He believes that they can't get along like before. There's another flashback to Josh's Christmas family party. His sister notices he likes Elizabeth, and that he wants them to be more than just friends. She suggests that he take her on a date, and gives him two tickets to a Christmas concert. Josh promises to ask her on a date, but we will soon learn whether he did. The next day, Elizabeth tracks down the candy store the man mentioned in the voicemail. Unfortunately, she cannot get any information about him, because she doesn't know what he looks like and not even his name, and they can't share their customer information with someone they don't know. She tries to look around to see if she can get anything that will be helpful. She finds raffle sign-up sheets, which she believes might be helpful, and takes pictures to start searching from there, without their consent. Josh bumps into her at the cafe while she is trying to call all the numbers in the raffle sign-up sheet to get information about the man. He tries to talk to her and hopes she will not brush him off. Elizabeth seems to be in a good mood, so she explains the progress she has made and that she has to call all the numbers in the raffle sign-up sheets. He offers to help her and she agrees. Well, it seems it's his lucky day after all. Meanwhile, Carter, the man looking for Madeline, visits his friend Pete. He is so surprised to see him after a long time, and also happy he has moved on with his life. Although Pete is packed up to travel, and he wishes Carter had told him that he was coming. Carter seems to have pushed most of his friends away after he left. Carter explains his plans to see Madeline in the city, and would love for them to get back together because he still loves her. Pete advises him not to get his hopes high, because he believes Madeline will have moved on after three years. Josh and Elizabeth have called most of the numbers and still haven't found anything useful. Elizabeth mentions being surprised to see him after many years, and also wants to know how he has been. He claims to have come home for Christmas this year because of his sister's son. Josh discovers that she is working in her mother's company, and not the New York Times job. But he gets to know that she did not accept the New York Times offer because of Andrew's demise. She seems to blame herself for it. Another flashback to Josh's family party. After receiving the ticket from his sister, Josh decides to ask Elizabeth on a date, and tells her how he feels about her. He looks for her and finds her with Andrew. Unfortunately, he overhears a conversation she is having with Andrew about wanting to be more than friends. Sadly, he concludes that Elizabeth is in love with Andrew, and he feels heartbroken. Back to the present, Elizabeth asks why he refused to pick up her calls after he left for Michigan. She thinks he blames her for Andrew's demise, but Josh apologizes and professes that he doesn't blame her. Unknown to her, he left because he was heartbroken, but he cannot bring himself to tell her. Elizabeth refuses to believe him, and she receives a call from one of the contacts in the raffle sign-up list, while Josh tries to remember what happened that day. In the flashback, he is heartbroken, drops the tickets on the table, and goes for a walk. His sister sees him leave and also sees the tickets, and she guesses he is heartbroken. After Josh's flashback, they could not get any information from the contacts in the raffle sign-up list. Elizabeth still wants to find the caller because of the tone of hope in his voice, but she has to look for a way to do that. Josh asks to listen to the voicemail, to listen to see if he might discover anything useful. She plays the voicemail, and they both listen to it. Josh hears faint music in the background, and he believes this might lead them to Maddie. They decide to give it a try, since he believes his sister might be of help with knowing the lyrics of the song. He takes her to his house to meet his sister. His mother is happy to see Elizabeth after all these years. Unfortunately, his sister does not know the song, so they have to look for another way. After thinking for a while, Elizabeth suggests they find who sang the song. It's now all hands on deck. Josh's mother suggests they meet a man who runs a record shop down the road. He happens to be a friend of Josh's father, so he will be willing to help them. However, Josh's mother asks them to help in decorating gingerbread cookies before they leave to meet the man. This makes them remember the good old days. Josh and Elizabeth meet with the man down the road, named Slide, who is willing to help them. Elizabeth plays the song, hoping the man will recognize it, but unfortunately, he doesn't. They are disappointed and have to look for another way. Meanwhile, Madeline, the lady Carter wishes to get back with, and whom he mistakenly messaged Elizabeth for, has a new boyfriend. Has she moved on or not? Well, she thinks of Carter, and the fond memories they shared. She is jolted back to reality when her new boyfriend brings the coffee he has gotten for her. However, even as he tries to make the conversation flow, it just won't, because she is in love with another man. Her heart still belongs to Carter, but the new boyfriend wishes to meet her family. She isn't thrilled, because she does not feel the same about him. He suggests that she think about it. 
Later that day, while in her house, Elizabeth continues her research. Josh calls to find out her progress, and to also ask her to hang out with him that same night. Elizabeth has not been able to find the song, but she also declines going out with him, because she does not want to get hurt again. Elizabeth has a flashback to what happened at Josh's family party. She receives a text message from her mom asking for her whereabouts. So she searches for Josh to take her back as promised, but she finds out that he left his sisters already. Then she asks Andrew to give her a ride back. But he insists she waits for Josh and tells him how she feels about him. There it is. Josh has been wrong all along. She loves him, and not Andrew. Elizabeth promises Andrew she will tell him the next day, and he gives her a ride home. Unknown to her, Josh left the party because he thought she was in love with Andrew. Back to the present, her mother visits her, and she plays her the Christmas song to find out if she recognizes the song. Her mother is surprised that she has not given up on the search, but she can't help with the Christmas song. She discovers she is working with Josh to search for the caller, but she thinks it is not a good idea. This is because he left her and did not reach out to her. Her mother knows how affected she was by the incident, so she is looking out for her and does not want her to be heartbroken. But Elizabeth assures her that she will be fine, and she has everything under control. Then her mother offers her the opportunity to be in charge of her firm, but she tells her she will think about it. Elizabeth meets with Slide the next day. He has found the album of the Christmas song she is looking for. He searches for it, and while waiting for him, she meets a lady who plays guitar and sings Christmas songs. The lady knows about her dilemma and encourages her to continue, hoping she finds the caller. Eventually, Slide finds it and plays it for her, to confirm it is the background music. She hugs Slide to show how grateful she is, as she appreciates him for his effort even though the person she is looking for is a total stranger. She calls Josh to inform him that Slide has found the Christmas song, and she manages to trace it to a snow globe. Remember the snow globe from the beginning. Yes, it was the gift that Carter got for Maddie. Josh is in his hotel's elevator while receiving the call, and is so happy they are getting closer to knowing who the caller is. He suggests they meet at the store that sells the snow globe. Guess who joins Josh in the elevator? Carter. However, he did not recognize him because he does not know what he looks like. Carter, on the other hand, does know Josh. Elizabeth and Josh meet at the store selling the snow globe, and they try to find out from the sales clerk if they can get information about the caller. Fortunately she remembers the man, but unfortunately, she does not know his name. The sales clerk tells them that Carter told her Maddie is in the city for a job. However, she promises to let them know if he comes back in. Elizabeth drops her contact card with her. At last, they are getting somewhere with their search. They are happy she is willing to help and hope she gets back to them. They decide to check out the snow globe the caller got for Maddie, and Elizabeth's mother happens to be in the same store. She sees them together and notices how happy her daughter is with her old friend. Josh is surprised to see her and apologizes for not reaching out to her for a very long time. She is happy they have been able to find the Christmas song, and wishes they find the caller. Elizabeth and Josh take a walk, still thinking of how they can find Maddie. While trying to do that, Josh remembers how they would do the same thing together back in the day. He confesses that he thinks she blames him for Andrew, because he left them at the party and did not take her home as promised. She does not blame him and asks why he left the party, but he still can't bring himself to explain to her the reason he left. Suddenly, he sees someone with a bag with holidays written on it, and he realizes that they misheard something on the voicemail. They think the caller meant holidays, but the caller references holidays, a local Christmas market, where they think Maddie might work. They decide to go there to find out. When they get to the Christmas market, they plan to ask around to find Maddie. One of the vendors asks them to play a Christmas wreath ring toss, and they decide to give it a try. The deal is that if Josh wins, his price is Elizabeth coming to his family's Christmas dinner, but if she wins, he will get her favorite cupcakes. They play and Josh wins, so Elizabeth will have to attend his family's Christmas dinner. They ask around about Maddie and find someone that knows her. However, she tells them she is not working that day, and she will be around the next day. They hope she is the one they are looking for, and Elizabeth hugs Josh happily. They bump into Josh's family in the Christmas market, and his mother is happy they are getting along. However, his sister does not want Elizabeth to get hurt, because her brother has refused to tell her how he feels about her. She even mentions the house Josh is planning to buy, and Elizabeth is surprised. She feels he wants to leave her again. His mother tries to make her feel better, and she asks her to join them for a family photo with Santa Claus, like they did when they were little. Meanwhile, the caller Carter has coffee with his friend Pete. His friend thinks Madeline will have moved on, and he does not want Carter to get heartbroken while waiting for her to reach out to him. He thinks he can't get a second chance with Madeline because he pushed her away and hurt her in the process. Carter wants to make things right, and he is better now, because he is seeing a therapist. Pete is happy he is better now, but still insists he leaves the city. He asks him to join him and his family for Christmas. Carter declines and hopes he gets a second chance with Madeline, because he can't bring himself to love someone else other than her. However, we get to know that Madeline is into music. She packs up for their Christmas show with her co-worker and friend. She explains to her that she has a sign, and hopes that something she has been wishing for will happen. 
Her friend does not believe in signs or wishes coming true. Madeline further explains what she means to her. We will find out what she means soon. Elizabeth attends Josh's family's Christmas dinner. They are happy to have her around and hope she finds the caller. They also hope the caller gets his second chance with Maddie. Elizabeth remembers Andrew and wishes he could be there with them to celebrate Christmas. Josh still thinks she misses him because they were in love, but can't confront her. He believes she is still in pain and she still blames herself for his passing. On her way home later that night, Josh's mom gives her a copy of the family photo they snapped with Santa in the Christmas market. She loves her and feels she is a part of the family. Josh offers to take her home, but she declines nicely because she called a cab already. After she leaves, Josh's sister sees the way he looks at her and asks him to admit that he misses her and just tell her. That might make her consider giving him a second chance. He does not disagree with his sister and plans to open up when he next sees her. The next day, Elizabeth and Josh go to the Christmas market to find Madeline. He finally confronts her about her conversation with Andrew and lets her know that he heard everything. However, not knowing that he has everything mixed up, she tells him she still feels the same. When will they get to understand the mix-up? We will soon find out. Elizabeth meets the vendor and she gets Maddie for her. She plays her the voicemail, but she is not the Madeline they are looking for. So they have to keep searching, but they feel they will not be able to find her before Christmas Eve. Josh, still hurt by thinking she loves Andrew, tells her that he has decided to move to Michigan. He let her know Hi is glad of the time they spent together these few days, and he wants them to remain friends. Elizabeth is confused and heartbroken. They wish each other Merry Christmas, in case they do not see each other till he travels. Madeline performs with her band at a Christmas party and feels she sees Carter, but assumes that it is an image. She invites them all to her concert and encourages them to get a ticket. Afterward, she looks for Carter but can't find him. Her new boyfriend happily gives her a gift and is also there to support her. It is now more obvious that she is not in love with the new boyfriend and hopes she finds Carter. Elizabeth gets ready for their office Christmas party and remembers Josh when she sees the family photo his mother gave to her. She wishes things could turn out well between them, but she assumes Josh does not love her. Back to Madeline and her new boyfriend, he has finally realized that Madeline is not in love with him and decides to let her go. She apologizes to him and lets him know that she could not get over her last relationship. Carter calls his friend Pete that he has changed his mind. He will be coming over to his place to celebrate Christmas. This is because he saw Madeline with her new boyfriend, and they look like they are in love. Unknown to him, they are no longer together. Josh's sister asks him to tell Elizabeth how he feels and not try to let her go. He lets her know he tried to, but he assumes she does not feel the same way, and it is high time he lets her go and just be her friend. While trying to get another beverage, Josh sees an advert for Madeline's show. He can't wait to share the good news with Elizabeth and rushes to their office Christmas party to inform her. At the party, Elizabeth's mother asks about the caller and she thinks it is a false end because they did not find Madeline. Her mother wants her to be happy and even lets her know that she will support her if she decides not to work for her firm again. She realizes she will be happy with Josh. Meanwhile, Josh waits for her at the front desk while her mother gets her for him. She is surprised to see him and he tells her that he found Madeline. She will perform with her band in the town Christmas concert. They decide to go and meet her. They sneak into the venue backstage with the help of a friend. Finally, they get to see Madeline and play her the voicemail. She is overwhelmed because it is the message she has been waiting for. However, it turns out that Madeline has a voicemail too. It is from Carter to Elizabeth. He was the driver of the car that ran into Elizabeth and Andrew, which led to Andrew's demise. He was looking for Elizabeth to apologize. The guilt was too much for him and that made him chase everyone around him away, including Madeline. Josh and Elizabeth meet Carter at the diner. She tells him that he got the numbers wrong and the voicemails were mixed up. Carter asks for forgiveness from Elizabeth and she says she never blamed him for Andrew's passing. Madeline also joins them at the diner. Carter is happy to see her, especially knowing that he will get a second chance with her. Elizabeth and Josh finally realize that they mixed up everything when trying to confess their feelings to each other. She wasn't telling Andrew that she loved him, she was telling him she loved Josh. They kiss and are finally able to love one another. At the Christmas concert, Madeline and her band sing, Time to Come Home for Christmas. Josh, Elizabeth, and Carter enjoy the show immensely. Madeline sees Carter and smiles. At long last, the two couples finally find what they longed for the most. Their fate was intertwined, and luck made it all work out at last, or perhaps it was the force of love. A love that is meant to be will forever find its way to be, no matter how long, and against all odds.